Hello again, Gooners. No music. Given given that up until until Podbean get the rack together regarding getting the balance right. Can't seem to get it right. Doesn't matter how much I spend on equipment. Never seems to be right, does it? So I'm giving it up for now, but not giving up watching Arsenal because after that last performance, wasn't blistering, was it? But a three a three goal victory is always good, even if you do concede one. Uh, Burnley had a pretty decent side. I did call them relegation fodder on the uh, on the website, but actually, yeah, they probably will go down. Let's make no bones about it. But they they put up a decent fight, and it wasn't wasn't the normal fight that you'd normally get from the Clarets. It wasn't push and pull so much as uh, I don't know what we'd say. There weren't too many X-rated tackles except for the one that got Vieira sent off. As I said, lots of positives. The odd negative, that was the odd negative, Vieira getting sent off. For the most ridiculous challenge, because it was sort of innocuous in that he didn't even make contact with the player. I think it was Brownhill. Didn't make contact with him. So it was an essentially an air kick. Imagine getting sent off for an air kick, of all things. And, um, well, that just obviously meant Arsenal finished with 10 men. The fans were very good to, to back Vieira. I'm not sure he really deserved that level of support, but it's good that he's getting it anyway. Um, hopefully he'll come back from this, but <clears throat> I'm not so sure he will. Um, I thought his performance, somebody on uh, Le Grove said his performance was quite good apart from the red card, but I disagree. I just thought he was barely in the game. I didn't notice him. I, I have seen him have good games, but they're few and far between. Um, just talking about a Burnley player for a moment, uh, Kolioshu. What a player he is! He played 80 minutes. gave um, He gave uh, Tommy At, uh, Tommy Yasu a really hard time. Very quick, almost almost managed managed to run past Saliba as well. But Saliba was just a little bit too cute for that. But this Kolioshu, I don't know where they got him from, but this left winger. Um, is a massive threat, and um, I think I think a lot of a lot of teams will have noticed that performance. So don't be don't be surprised if he moves on from from Burnley Burnley in the not too distant future. Anyway, three points is three points. However, you get them, and um, obviously made difficult by by uh, that crazy tackle from Vieira, who came on as a substitute for Guy Kai even Kai Havertz. I don't agree that. Havertz played badly. I thought he did quite well. He does stick his foot in, uh, in the right way. He's not doing a Vieira and just just launching himself into the air. I don't quite know what Vieira was doing. Havertz, the way he plays makes sense to me. People have said he's graceful, and yet, and yet he lacks that low centre of gravity because obviously his height prevents him having... He can't have that, can he? But he is, he is graceful, but he's also tough. He's not. He's not an a Meza Urzil at all. Maybe he's not quite as good as uh, Urzil at playing the final ball. But I think I still feel. I think a lot of people still have faith in Havertz that it will come good. But it may be a long wait. Let's hope it isn't. The other guy from Chelsea who joined not so many many years ago, uh, Jorginho, is doing pretty well. Obviously, Arsenal are hit. Have been hit by injuries, so. It's a good job that these um, these replacements are are really really worth their weight in gold. So Jorginho had a pretty good game. I would say Havertz had a relatively good game. Obviously Rice is the star of the midfield. He continues to be that. I thought he played better at Newcastle uh, because I just noticed him more. Maybe he was just so outstanding in this game. In this game against Burnley, Arsenal just found it very difficult to break down the visitors. It was just I wouldn't say it was a difficult watch, but they were having problems. And Burnley were quite good on the counter-attack as well. Um, what I found most interesting post-game post is the lack of talk about David Raya and his performance. He made a couple of good saves. Um, was he to blame for the goal? It was deflected. I'm not so sure he was. But he didn't look good. He never looks good when you're picking the ball out of the net. But I thought his game was very assured. And if he continues to play like that, Ramsdale is unlikely to get back in the team. As I mentioned, Tommy Yasu had a 
had a good game, but did get taken apart by uh, the left winger, the Burnley left winger, Koliosu, is it? Uh, he, well, I think Koliosu, or whatever his name is, is going to take apart a lot. Um, he's going to take apart a lot of uh, teams in the near future. So watch out for that name. Um, Saliba was imperious, scoring a goal as well. Doesn't get much better than that for a central defender. Alongside him, Gabriel, quite quiet. And left back, if you can call him that, because he's everywhere, Zinchenko. What a great goal he scored. Scissor kick. Some people call it a kung fu kick. I'd probably say it's not quiet, but loads of jokes coming out about how great that goal was. All all encouraging for Zinchenko. He, he really wears his heart on his sleeve and uh, he deserved that goal. It was an excellent performance. Saka seems a bit quiet at the moment, but he still manages to get an assist. How he does it, I have no idea. And that assist, he provided Trossard with, with a goal and Trossard's bravery to go in and hit, you know literally physically uh, collide with the post in order to put the ball in is testament to his bravery. So I was very impressed with Trossard. And it wasn't just that. He came on afterwards. I thought he'd be off. After he scored that opening goal, I thought we won't be seeing him in the second half. But no, came back out. Um, he'd had a lot of treatment on his forearm and played the second half just as well as he played the first. So I was sorry to see him leave. And he managed to, um, to get an assist as well. He takes very good corners. Probably the best corner taker at the club. Martinelli, as usual, gave um, <laughs> gave the opposition uh, a song and dance routine. Um, yeah, he didn't score, obviously, but I'm sure that goal will come in the not-too-distant future. I understand he's got two goals. And how many has Trossard got? Six. And Saka's got six, I believe. So he's he's got a long way to go to catch up with those two. Um, coming on a sub, uh, Nelson came on as a sub. Kivior and Ketio was quiet. Nelson was very quiet. Kivior is looking more and more solid. I think people that have listened to the podcast or read the website know that initially I wasn't sure about Kivior, but I'm starting to think he's the real deal. I remember when he uh, almost gave away a penalty at Newcastle, not this season, but he didn't look too... He didn't. He looked a bit shaky in that game. But as I said, at the moment, I think the only, the only player getting a bit of grief at the moment is Fabio Vieira. And that was total lunacy, what he did. Um, obviously, Arsenal fans would love him to stay because he's got a great name, Patrick Vieira. Patrick Vieira's namesake. Everybody's, everybody really wants Fabio Vieira to, to, um, to progress after this massive setback. But perhaps the only way he can do that is build himself up in the gym and, and come back bigger and stronger. Well, he's not going to get taller, but at least he could put on a couple of pounds, but not, not flab, but you know what I mean, muscle. So he needs to be a bit more muscular so he can resist challenges and, but still keep, still keep his level of expertise and technique. So really that's all I've got to say for, for this session. And um, until the next time, adios amigos.